what ends up happening. I, I really try to keep K State at arm's length. Uh, my uncle laughed about something. He goes, "You know, they're just going to break your heart again." When I was back home, and I go, "Oh, for sure." You know, I have some buddies that bet them at fifty to one, forty to one to win the whole thing, and I'm like, "You guys need to slow your roll." This uh, K State team's playing well. Yeah, uh, the Big Twelve has some really good teams, but you know, to ask them to beat a Kentucky team um, like they did last year, to ask them to to maybe get matched up against the Duke team. I, I think this team's going to be like a six or a seven seed. And I think they will win the big, the big 12, but I, I just, again, arm's length. Okay. I'm going to take it game by game. If I can find an opportunity to bet against them, maybe take, if I can get a three with Iowa state, I may do so on Saturday. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I remember tweeting back and forth. Dean Wade was out and you told me flat out there are nothing without Dean Wade. And they, that was when they were on their bad streak. But I think that they're a little bit undervalued and, they might still be undervalued because of that. You know, Iowa State's visiting Manhattan. They, how did they lose to TCU? I, I don't know. Uh, that was a lot of best bets out there, and they literally, literally lost flat out. And they're supposed to have one of the best home court advantages up in Iowa State. They absolutely there. do. I, I've been there, and it is. I mean, what else are you going to do when it's minus 10 and names Iowa? I mean, totally. you're going to go get drunk and you're going to go to the basketball game. Exactly, exactly. You know, Ken Palm's even got Iowa State the 15th best team and K-State the 27th, right? But that, I don't think that factors in what they really are with Dean Wade. Uh, you know, K-State's K offense only ranks 115th on Ken Palm nationally. And, uh, and, you know, I think they're a lot better than that. I think the best thing about the handicap in this is to look at the conference performances, right? Because that's, you know... Wade came back shortly after conference play started. Uh, K-State's got the fifth best offense in the Big 12 and the second best defense. The Cyclones have the third best in both categories. So that that tells me they're pretty even. I think these teams are pretty close. Uh, both have faced pretty similar schedules. The key for me here is for the Wildcats is uh, where are they going to are they going to stop Mariel Shayok again, right? And, uh, you know, he's he's uh, Iowa State's best player. They kept him off double digits that last game. And if they can keep him low, under 15 points here, I like the fact that K-State's in first. I think they can embrace that. It's not like Kansas is in first and they can kind of let down. I think that motivates them to not let down. And I love the fact that K-State's 8-1 and one against the spread their last nine games. I am with you here. I have the line at two. K-State favored by two, but I like this up to four and a half, personally. I got the over-under at yeah, one, 129, but I am going to be a, a K-State. Uh, I'm going to have a ticket on them if it's below five points. Yeah, you know what I ended up doing the other day as I had K-State uh, plus three against Texas, and, and the line should have been four and a half or five, to be honest with you, based on everybody's power rating. Um, but I knew that revenge after just getting smoked in Manhattan by 20 points that this team was going to come to play. Right. And I think what we really saw was also a gross overreaction on the total. This total is going to probably be a little bit higher. I think the sports books are now going to adjust back. But I think it closed at like 121 and a half, 122. And so when they scored, I believe it was like 74 or 78 in the first half. I turned to the guys and I said, I'm hammering the second half. I'm just like, you haven't even watched the game. I'm like, the line is not 22 points off. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, second half went flying under. Um, so look at definitely totals in regards to Kansas State. As you mentioned, their defense, really good. And you're not going to see them give up a ton of points in two halves. Maybe one half, but definitely not two. And unless Dean Wade is playing out of his mind from the three-point line, I just don't see this game kind of going over. This is going to be two really solid defenses. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this game literally like 123, 124, and it land 120. That's fantastic. And a fantastic way of sports betting. If ever the total is way off at halftime, go the opposite way. Don't go with the trend because that's how it's supposed to be. And so everyone's going to be thinking, you know, keep going the way the momentum is. Go against the momentum there. Fantastic, Kelly. You know, one of the, one of the, some of the best sports bettors play it like that. So that that's awesome. No, completely agree. I think K-State also controls the tempo of this game. Let's move into another Big 12 game here. Oklahoma is going to TCU. I got TCU laying about four points. I got the total around 142. Do you have any thoughts on this game? You know, here's a TCU team that, man, I have, I just can't quite figure them out. I think Jamie Dixon's done a good job. I think they have, as you mentioned, 
a pretty good offense and a pretty good defense. But there have been some absolute stinkers they've laid. And then they've played some really good games. Uh, you know, they, they took Kansas to the wire, took Kansas into overtime. I couldn't believe they were laying points in that game. I, and everybody said it. Normally, I would say it's a trap game, take TCU. And I was like, I have to take KU. This case, mm-hmm. KU has hit rock bottom here. I have to take them. Right. And sure enough, they won in overtime. I didn't, I actually would have preferred them to lose. I, somebody tweeted me, um, about TCU. I go, I hope they win by one. <laughs> like, you know, that would be my <laughs> best case scenario. But yeah, you know, they barely beat Oklahoma State. And then, you know, off that terrible loss to Baylor, they barely beat, they barely beat Oklahoma State at home of all places. And then they go on the road as double digit underdogs and they beat Iowa State, come back home, can't beat KU. So this is going to be an interesting game with Oklahoma. I think it's probably going to come out around three, if I had to guess. And, and speaking of not being able to figure out Oklahoma, they've lost five straight. I'm going, what in the world is going on with Long Kruger? I have a ton of respect for him. Obviously, he was out here at UNLV. He was at K-State in the 80s. Really great guy. But this Oklahoma team just has been interesting, to say the least. Oh, so yeah. I do think they'll probably go on the road and lose at TCU, um, unless TCU doesn't have much left in the tank after that Kansas game. If you're giving me probably four and a half or more, I'll probably be on Oklahoma. But anything other than other than that, I'm probably just going to stay away because, again, this TCU team, I have been, I have yet to be able to figure out. No, I can't. Fi- both teams are weird. This, like you said, the Sooners have been an ag- uh, against the spread, darling. Really, sixteen, six, and three, flying under the radar, yet still losing. <laughs> you know, and uh, a lot of that is because you know of of what happened last year. Everyone was betting against them, um, and so they lost a lot of value when they had that. Uh, you know, when they had their star player, you know, people lost them and started fading them. The line adjusted and, you know, they become a great against the spread team. TCU hasn't been too shabby either. I was shocked they uh, only beat Oklahoma State by two points. I had a TCU ticket a couple, uh, week ago or whatever that was, and they ended up, they're up by like 12, 14 points, and they just almost choked the game completely away. You know, so TCU has been kind of weird, weird themselves. Um, yeah. The Sooners lost the last five games in a row. That's crazy. You know, these teams met earlier, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, uh, the Sooners won 76-74. to 74. You know, can, can TCU get some uh, home court revenge here, right? So uh, the Sooners, what, what I don't like about the side, if I was going to bet TCU, the Sooners are 3-0-2 and two as an away underdog, right? So ugh, yeah, right there, you know, you're talking 4-4.5. Four, four I'm not sure if I'm going to be a player at that. But a glaring thing to me, is that both TCU and Oklahoma play better when they pick up the pace, okay? Now, on Ken Palm, they average about, which everyone uses, they average about 69 plays per game, which looks at looks like they're pretty average, but I think that the fact that the Big 12 plays so slow, it, it brought that down. They don't want to play 69 plays. They want to play 72, 73. You know, you got teams like Texas Tech. You got slow teams like Baylor, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Texas, you know, these teams have already played all them, bringing that number down a bit. So the reality is I think both teams are going to play faster, you know, because it's it's like when they played West Virginia this year. The, you know, the, That's exactly what I just pulled up on Kim. I was going to bring that up when they both played West Virginia. Right. In West Virginia. That's a really good point. Exactly. And West Virginia is the only other team that plays at that, you know, a little bit higher pace in the Big 12 or one of the few. Right. So because of this, I'm going to play the over especially if it comes out at what Ken Palm says at 142. I actually like this. I like it a lot up to 146. So that's my play. I do not hate that at all. That's probably a better choice than playing the side here. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see where that comes out. But uh, if other people are thinking like us, we might have to uh, uh, jump on that baby early. Well, let's talk. Let's move into another Big 12 game. Uh, West Virginia versus Kansas. You know, Kansas is going to be laying about 17 points over unders at 148. And I'll start here. Um, You know, I don't know what could be worse than being West Virginia right now. Uh, Extremely disappointing season. But maybe if you're Kansas, who had top four aspirations, you know, losing their big center, uh, losing a couple other guys, and now they're just barely top 16. You know, is that more of a disappointment than West Virginia? You know, you could argue it either way. But uh, this game's a really good spot for Kansas, I think, to get some revenge off of a really bad loss against a very bad team. You know, West Virginia did beat them at home. Um, Unfortunately, the spread's going to be factoring in the revenge spot. 
But West Virginia, they rank 98th in offensive efficiency. They rank 140th on defense. I mean, these numbers are like group of five smaller conference type numbers, right? Uh, the Mountaineers rank dead last in almost every single category in conference play. Dead last. Kansas, on the other hand, is at least still in the mix in the Big 12 with four losses. And they're going to the tournament, right? They're going to the tournament no matter what happens. The biggest yeah, thing... Yeah, I don't, I don't see them not going to the tournament. You're correct. They'd have to lose every game, I think, with some of their big Pretty wins. Pretty much. And then big wins. have a horrible showing in the Big 12 tournament. Absolutely. I'm not sure if everyone knows, but West Virginia just lost two, two key starters, um, Essa Ahmad and uh, Wesley Harris, for the rest of the season for disciplinary reasons. These are two starters here. So add that to what's been going on. Yeah, I missed that. I hadn't seen that in the news yet. And, and I probably would have seen it before betting this this Kansas game. But, you know, it's interesting because if anybody's never been to Allen Fieldhouse, we were just talking about how tough it is to play in Hilton. Uh, it's really tough to play in Allen Fieldhouse. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, and, and, you know, I'm going to get some grief for this. I do not care what anybody says. I have never seen worse officiating in my life than in Allen Fieldhouse. <laughs> I'm no, I don't care who's playing there. Every game I ever watch on TV, there is a ton of home cooking for KU in Allen Fieldhouse every single time. It doesn't matter who's officiating. It just seems like the calls seem to go their way. Um, I played them against Oklahoma State and said, there's no way they're coming off that loss from K-State and they're going to throttle Oklahoma State. And they started off really slow. Mm -hmm. uh, but I agree. I think it's going to be that same outcome here with West Virginia. I think the line is going to be sky high, but I wouldn't be surprised to see KU just absolutely thump this team. Absolutely. And I don't know if you've ever been to Cameron Indoor Arena, but that would be uh, <laughs> somebody saying that maybe Duke's got the got the uh, home cooking going for them. There's a lot of... I have not, but I've watched <laughs> enough Duke games that I definitely thought they got... After reversing that charge call, I'm going, okay, does the ACC really need Duke in it that bad? I guess they do. <laughs> I can go I can go on a tangent right now. All right, I can go on a tangent for some of these refs, and I specialize in the Big Ten, and I've seen some really poor refereeing. And, and of course, the networks are always going are always going to say, oh, the refs are great, but we know the truth here. But either way, we don't care. The, the important thing is I agree with what you what you said here. I know that Kansas has been, you know, a huge at home, right? And but I don't think this line's even going to make up for what they're going to do to West Virginia. Sometimes when the younger kids will step up after the suspension, but it, the fact that you know Kansas is coming off of that, um, I think they're they're just going to be extra motivated for revenge against West Virginia. Um, I think it's they're going to put up enough points. I actually like Kansas all the way up to twenty one points. I think they're going to come out wow. around seventeen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. West, West I mean, West I do Virginia. think they'd come out. I thought I thought around sixteen, seventeen as well. And you know, they're going to throw some other factors in there, and they're going to get that up very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when people start looking at the news of uh, West Virginia's disciplinary suspensions. So, I'm excited to do that. I'm not afraid to lay big chalk if the spot is right. And I think Kansas needs a big win. They need some revenge. The overtime game was too long ago. It's not going to affect them. This is where I'm actually going to be laying the chalk. Kansas minus 17 points here. Well, let's move on here. Um, what do we have left? I have, I think it's just Tennessee versus Kentucky here. Kentucky is going to be laying, I have it about three points. I, I think they're going to be laying about three points at home. I think the, the total is going to be at 146. Have you got a chance to look at this game yet? So I've looked at it a little bit. We talked about it yesterday on Wager Talk, so I had to, I had to get it previewed a little bit. And I think this is going to be a really interesting dynamic uh, because you have Tennessee with a giant target on their back. You have Kentucky with a chip on their shoulder after losing for the first time ever under Coach Kyle to LSU uh, in Lexington. And it is going to be really interesting. You have to give Kentucky three and a half, four points for a home court. you got to give them a little bit for a chip on their shoulder. I think Rick Barnes has done a really good job with this Tennessee team. No doubt about it. But this is just a really interesting matchup here. And, and I don't know really, truly what to make of it. This is two teams that I think are both really great. Kentucky coming into their own. As you know, Coach Cal teams, because they are so young every single year, they take a little time um, to learn how to play as a cohesive unit. And 
Tennessee just kind of, I feel like, and, and maybe guys that study college basketball 